Hi guys, in this video we'll be proving why the sum of the initial momentum before the collision equals to the sum of the final momentum after the collision. So let's start by defining Newton's second law. Newton's second law says that the, that the force, the sum of the forces equals to ma. And we know that the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. This means that f equals to m delta v all over delta t. Now, on top, this equation represents the momentum of an object. Since you know that the momentum of an object is this is the product of the mass and the velocity of the object. So this means that f equals to delta p all over delta t. So from Newton's third law, let's say we're having two balls, ball one and ball two. If these balls were to collide, the force that ball one exists to ball two and the force that ball two exists to ball one will be the same in magnitude but different in direction. This means that F1 will have to equals to negative F2. Now, going back to Newton's second law, we know that the force is the rate of change of momentum. So this means that F1 is going to be delta P1 all over delta t and f2 will be delta p2 all over delta t. If we multiply both sides of this equation by delta t, we are going to get that delta p1 is equals to negative delta p2. Why? Because Delta T is going to cancel out if we multiply both sides of these equations by delta T. So we know that the change is the same as the final minus the initial. This means that delta P1 is the same as M1 V1 minus M1 U1 and this is going to equal to negative inside we are having m2 v2 minus m2 u2 and next we have m1 v1 minus m1 u1 if we multiply in by that negative we're going to get negative m2 v2 plus m2 u Two. Negative and negative gives positive. So if we take this to that side and this to the other side, we are going to have M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equals to M2 U2 2 plus M1 U1 which is the equation we were proving. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching.